You know, if you think about it, if you Febreze your apron about like once every week, you never really have to wash it. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Hey Dante, oh, oh. this is Tim the half Blind Potter here. We've been working closely with a gal named Rachel McKinsley for the Fun Eye Fund. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise money for um, those folks that need a prosthetic eye that may not be able to afford one. Insurance sometimes calls them, you know, cosmetic and not a necessary appliance. So we're trying to help out those that need. So month of October, it's Blindness Awareness Month, and we have started a blindfold challenge, which I'm hoping you would enjoy, and maybe Earth Nation as well. So here's the deal. Blindfold yourself, start to finish, document the process of making a coffee mug, blindfolded, of course. Tag me in it, uh, tag adhesive in it, tag the fun I fund in it. Um, we will all repost any progress videos that you post and tag us in so we get your names out there. Um, once you're done making your mug, auction it off online, proceeds go to the Fun Eye Fund, which then will uh, help out those that need a prosthetic eye. So thanks again for your time and uh, thanks for any help you can provide. So that's my two eyed friends was the Half Blind Potter on Instagram. A friend of mine who as you guessed it, does does not have does not have two of something. He and his friends are trying to raise money for people who don't have money to get optical surgery on their eyes because sometimes the insurance companies, you know how much we all love the insurance companies, like to say they're more cosmetic than a necessity. It also turns out the month of October is Blindness Awareness Month. So the Half Blind Potter and his friends made the Blindfold Challenge, where you blindfold yourself and make a mug the entire process you must be blindfolded. This does a couple of things. Number one, it brings more awareness in October during Blind Awareness Month. Number two, it gets plenty of people's names out there, especially in Earth Nation who might want to shout out or get more cross-pollination for your social media. And thirdly, it helps raise money for the Fun Eye Fund, an organization that helps people who are suffering from either blindness or partial blindness with these fun eyes. That's why it's called the Fun Eye Fund. Of course, if you don't want to blindfold yourself, but you still want to participate and help support the Fun Eye Fund and people who might have seeing challenges, you can definitely go downstairs. Then there's a link down below to where you can donate straight to the Fun Eye Fund without blindfolding yourself and posting it on social media. However, not only am I going to donate $100 to the Fun Eye Fund myself, we're also going to do the blindfold challenge. I'm going to be so honest and real with you right now. I forgot that I have to blindfold myself when doing this video uh, and so when I agreed to it I thought I would have full eyesight of what I was doing. Usually when I make videos I have everything kind of under control like I know exactly what I'm doing. This might be one of the rare videos where throughout the process I might, I might mess up quite a bit. So I am going to participate in the blindfold throwing challenge. Also realistically speaking when this guy shows up to give you a mission looking like Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid what are you gonna do, say no? He was like, Dante, do you wanna help us out? And I was like, yes sir, I do. I'll fully admit I'm cheating a little bit just because I kind of placed everything where I need it to be beforehand. I often have my metal rib over there, my pin tool over here, but uh, I won't be able to do that this time because from this point on, I will be blindfolded. Oh, okay, okay, so this is, okay, so. As usual, I heavily underestimated what I was doing. I was like, I know where things are, it's fine. <laughs> I can handle it as I fumble around. Okay, I, I, I can't lose that. That has to go somewhere. The only thing I know is that the camera's over there somewhere. <laughs> okay. I really hope that survived. Usually you guys get lots of close-ups on the channel so you can see my operative hand and what I'm doing and how I'm applying pressure to things and things of that nature. Um, because I, I want people who are watching my channel to learn as I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff on the ground. I want people to learn as they watch my channel. So I often don't have the angle from up here or over here. I have it from right here because this is my operative hand. So you can see my hand movements and my hand motions and the, the hand jutsu I'm doing as I do stuff. Three and three fourths pound. But I can't, me I can't measure that. Do I have water? I have water. Is it fresh water? 
No, it's not fresh water. So usually I like to make sure that there's a close up enough of the work that you're seeing on YouTube to see what I'm doing. So most of the time you're not seeing my face, but for the purposes of this video, I have to have my full body in the shot and you're not gonna get much of a close up because you need to see that I'm blind. Otherwise I could be cheating. Otherwise I could take it off like this. You would get a great close up of the shot and the entire time I'm working with it, I could just have my stuff off. We're gonna try and keep wide shots so you can see that I'm honestly blindfolding myself. I don't know why I'm doing this, like I'm trying to go by sound, like, oh, does that sound wedged enough? Like, no. Trying to cut this in half is crazy, because I don't have a barometer for what half looks like. Okay. Okay, so we have two balls. We're good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the wheel is this round. Therefore, half of that round should be center. You know what, I'll take that. That's all right. I'm pretty, su I'm pretty sure I can center blindfold. I'm pretty sure I can center blindfold it. Okay, my first blindfolded pull. That feels wet enough. Hey. <laughs> Is that enough? Is that enough height? I feel like it's enough height. Hold on. Down here. Where's my wooden knife? It's in my hand. Do this. Cut some of that off. That should be there. Cut some of this off. I felt excess. I don't know what to do with the excess clay now because I have two reclaim buckets. One's over there, one's over here, but one's white clay, one's brown clay. And I don't want to contaminate my clay, so I'm kind of just putting it in the water bucket. But that's where my attachment slip lives. It's weird because usually I'm looking down like this as I throw or I'm looking up at a TV as I throw, kind of like doing back and forth. But I don't really, I don't really have that option, so my head's just tilted to the side in desperation for any information I can get from my, from the sound of my wheel, you know? That should work. That should look good. Okay, hold on. I don't know if it looks good, but it should work. Water on the side. My wire. I'm gonna over arc my wire a lot. I don't think my piece is that big, but I wanna be safe. And I should be able to feel when it comes off. I think we're good. And that should be the piece. I, you're over there somewhere. That should be the piece. Put this on the wooden thing. And then we're gonna take our blindfold off just to see how we did. Ah! Ooh! Ooh! You know what the worst part is, is that I don't wanna touch my blindfold and get it dirty. And my hands are brown clayed up right now. So I can't, like, I can't even, I have to walk over to the clean station with, a, with this. You know what, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, actually. Here, take a look. It's kind of chunky. It has a bit of a swirl at the top, and the shoulder is a bit too far in. But, you know, I'll take that. I'll take that all day. 
And just because I'm kind of treating this like I would a regular commission, I'm gonna double up on the pieces. Usually when you do a commission, not that this is, I'm just treating it like that, you do more than one piece. So if somebody orders a mug, you would make like three or four mugs, sell off the others if they come out good, and any failures, you just never talk about them. The best one goes to your commissionee, while the rest of them either get sold online or chucked if they're just worse enough or not high enough quality. As you get better, those numbers kind of go away, but any job you do, you shouldn't just make one item. So we're gonna make one more of these blindfolded. I think when I split the clay in half, I didn't do a very good job at doing it 50-50 because I was obviously blindfolded. And so now that I'm really feeling this clay, I'm like, wow, this is gonna be a, a gargantuan mug. Right? Doesn't this... I can't see this. You can see it, though. Tell, in the... Doesn't this feel like more than six inches? Like, that's definitely more than six inches, right? I would ask you to comment below on whether that's more than six inches or not, but I really don't want to wake up in the morning to people being like, no, that's actually four inches, and then I'm like, oh, what? Oh. That explains a lot. There's no way this is a regular six inch or five inch tall mug. This has to be a vase. It has to be, it's too big. I'm gonna be, I, I'm gonna be so distraught if I pull my blindfold off and this is like three inches. Oh, thank God, that's actually huge. Get the measuring tape out. Okay, that's, that's actually seven inches, so it's, it's, it's actually the opposite of what I thought, which I am, I, I am, which is good, good news for me. So I think we'll record ourselves trimming this, but I don't think we're going to put a handle on this and make it a mug, unless people in the comments down below really want me to, because this would be, well, I think you don't, you don't see it from how I see it, because from your angle, I think it's top down, so it looks a little bit smaller. Let me just try and open your eyes real quick. This is actually quite large, right? So like, I don't think this would be a good mug to be honest. Just for the purpose of consistency, I do want to tell you that I am walking towards the table blindfolded right now, even though you wouldn't be able to see me put this down and blindfold at the same time. Lower? Seriously? Oh, my pinkies, my pinkies got it. My pinky detector got it. Here's my table, here's the board, so. If I dry my pots. Okay, I think we're good. Now we're going to leave these to slow dry. We're gonna put the blindfold back on at a later time. And just for consistency sake, because I feel like I constantly have to prove to you that I'm I'm blindfolded. I don't know, I do not know if the camera is on my face whatsoever. I hope it is, I really hope it is. We're gonna come back, turn the camera back on and trim these while blindfolded. I assume to someone who's been blind all their lives or at least partly blind, the things that I'm experiencing right now are, are, are something that they think about like for the first month. But in my brain, I know my table's here, my table is like this up to a wall. I know I set my camera there somewhere, so you must be somewhere around here. But I'm not gonna lie to you, there was, this is the second take. The first take was me talking to somebody over there. 7.59 a.m. You know, I was thinking last night, how can I simultaneously make sure that you see my face while I'm getting close-ups of the footage. And I sat there for a bit and I was like, man, if only I had an extra camera laying around here somewhere. And then I uh, scrolled Instagram for 20 minutes. Well, duh. I'm pretty sure I can just record myself on my phone while having this camera look at the product. So that way we won't have to have such wide angle shots. Wait, before I put the blindfold on, uh, I gotta give you one of these.
<laughs> I found it. Okay, so we are putting the blindfold on now. This is the crazy part because I know I wrapped these up the day before. I was checking on them intermittently just to make sure that they didn't get too dry, but I'm pretty sure. That feels good. I think I think these are ready to trim. I think I'll trim this one first. And by the time I trim this one, the handle for this one should be dry because I do want to make a fully fledged mug out of these. So let's take these over to whatever to whatever's behind me. So I put them close enough to me to realize where they are. That's the mug, that has to be the mug. Okay. Can I tap center blindfolded? Is that a thing I can do? I don't know, Your Honor. That seems that seems pretty centered to me. That seems root. That I'm gonna tr I'm gonna trust that centered. I feel like I can get away with this pretty easily, because I know I don't even look when I do this in the first place. To be honest with you, I'm usually watching anime or YouTube or some Destiny something something. I can feel that I've run into the other piece of clay right here and that there's one space that's not covered here. So I'm just gonna cover it with this. That's probably more clay than I need, but then again, I cannot see how much I have or need, so. Is this? That's upside down. I had it upside down. It's so, cr it's, it's so crazy because I thought I would actually be trash at this. Like, going into this challenge, I thought to myself, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Like, there's no way I'll make even a straight pot. But now that I'm looking at the products, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking now, clearly. But now that I'm kind of feeling around and I look at the, the after effects of what I'm doing, it's honestly not, it's honestly not as hard as I thought it would be. I don't I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do with these trims. So I'm just letting them fall on the ground. It's okay. I know the guy who cleans the studio, he won't mind. So what I usually do when I trim anyway, if I'm being honest with you, is that if I have something that has a big or flat enough bottom, I will put my trim tool this way, put it down here in the middle, and I'll trim until I reach a point where the nose of my piece hits kind of this wall. And hopefully by that point where I, where I decide to do this, I've trimmed down deep enough to where it's very clear that it's hit a wall. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up or not, to be honest with you, but hopefully you can kind of see what I'm talking about, where the nose, this part of the tool, will just hit a roadblock and I won't be able to go anymore. That's how I know where my... F my problem is I, I do feel like a double foot here going on, so I think I've made a mistake. I think I've made a, I think I've, I think I've made a mistake for sure. I'm gonna make a glaze line here just because I'm insecure about it. Okay, that should look like a small vase with a glaze line near the bottom. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put my sponge where I needed it to be. No lie, no cap on God. 
I was gonna just grab a new sponge. I have a pile of them over there. I was just gonna grab a new, a new mud tool sponge. I think, I think this is okay. I'm pretty sure it's okay. We'll look at it later and we'll confirm the kill. But for right now, I'm just feeling things. I think it's okay. For right now, I think this ought to be fine. Will you guys check the bottom for me and see if it's okay? <laughs> I don't know where the camera is. Here comes the part that I think is quite easy. And if there's anything to go by the rest of my life, um, what often happens is that I think something's easy and it's really, really hard. Um, and often the really hard things are like a breeze in comparison to the level of difficulty. I thought they would be, so we need to pull a handle. I do apologize if the camera itself is not where it needs to be to see me pull a handle, because I don't know how high the camera goes, right? But I'm gonna make a carrot of clay. I'm gonna take my hands, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do the motion that God, God bore me to do. And... Yes? No? Let me know in the comments below if that's okay. So we're gonna put this here. We're gonna put... We're gonna put this here. And then hopefully... Nope. 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 Yes? I tap centered last time pretty well, I think. To be fair, I have not seen the other pot yet, but I think I did okay. I'm actually really worried that I look like a fool right now and that I'm doing things very wrong. I always start, and I'm not trying to make this a teaching moment, but I always start with this big side here because it covers more ground. If I start here, it, it doesn't cover as much space. So because I know I'm gonna trickle down this this edge here into like a finer point like this hopefully I can I can I can feel there's like a lump here and that part's wrong I can feel that's not quality I think I fixed it. I'll be honest, it's not, it's not, and I'm, and I'm jumping ahead of the gun here. It's not like it's harder because I'm blind. It's just that I can't go as fast, which in a world that kind of rewards speed is a major hindrance, to be honest with you. Think about it. If you look something up on the internet that should be a simple answer and it took you more than five minutes of actively looking, you'd give up on it. And five minutes for knowledge, nothing, is nothing. You would totally look at it. Most of y'all don't even go to the second page of Google searches. That's how impatient the human race in general is. So I, I know, if, I, I'd be pissed if I had to do this all the time. I'm gonna round out my edges, cause I'm not a monster. I'm gonna see if I can chatter this. Do I still have a, a tools? I, I'm gonna have to use a key point for this, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop now. Cause I've never I've never chattered blindfolded before and I feel like I did just chatter right now, but I also know there's a point of chattering where it goes too deep into the body and I cannot visually tell where that is. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna give it up right now. It got suctioned on. There we go. I, I think I got it. I'm pretty sure I got it. I really hope the rim is fine. But I can't, I can't see how round the rim is. That feels good. This feels better quality than the stuff I usually make. That's the sad thing, is that this feels way better. Okay, so I set everything up over here, and I did not take my blindfold off 
while I did it, which, to be honest with you, took an embarrassingly long time. On account of I can't see. So I'm pretty sure I have my vase here. My vase is here. And then I have the handle right here. Now I'm gonna do something that I almost never suggest to Annie. Ooh, I forgot my towel. Ooh, I forgot my towel. Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hands. This video is clipped so you don't have to see it, but that also took an embarrassingly long time to, I can't let go of this towel, actually. I was gonna put down the towel, I'm so used to like flinging it other places. Can't let go of this towel. I'm sorry there's so many awkward silences, but half of them are just me concentrating. What I generally do with half of my work is I will dry this handle, I'll chop it, I'll score, I'll slip both sides, and I'll stick them together. However, I don't think I have the patience at this point to go get scoring and slipping tools. So I'm gonna hope that the, the moistness of this handle right here is moisture enough to apply and, and attach as long as I slow dry it correctly. Usually it is, I'm just the kind of potter that scores and slips anyway because better safe than sorry. But I do think we should be okay. Usually what I do, usually what I do, and this is just the way I work, is I'll get the mug, I'll put the handle behind the mug, and I'll size it like this. And as long as I get the right angle, I'll cut it to that angle. So let's say it's like this. I'll get my tools, I'll cut them to the angle that it's on. So if my cup's curved out this way, I'll cut the, the uh, attachment point this way. But if the cup is like V-tapered inwards, I'll cut it this way. Fortunately for me, it's pretty standard. So we can do that. This clay we're going to need for our maker's mark. At one point I had to get my towel and I, and I forgot my towel. So I actively walked over there blindfolded to find my towel. And I sang Jesus take the wheel as I did it. He, did, he didn't do none of that. He didn't take nothing. He gave me alcohol. Okay, can you please tell me? Dad, what are you doing? I'm doing a challenge for like a charity. Where are the slip marks? Where are the score marks? Is that good? Yeah, you put your score marks really high, so you're gonna have to smooth that out, but yeah. That's good? My wife doesn't like anything, by the way, so if she says it's good, it must be all right. It's, uh, it needs a, it's not quite connected well enough on one side, but it. I'm blindfolded though. It's, it's fine. So we need to take this, take this. I don't know if I did a very good job at the scoring and slipping of this. I didn't, I didn't slip this at all, let's be real. But... <laughs> but I know that to some degree, as long as I put moisture on here as, as like an uh, attachment agent, I should be okay. There's no way these are in the proper drying stage for me to call them finished work, but I think we're finished. We're done. Oh, that's wet. I just felt a big old glop of water fall on my hand from too much moisture. Done. I get to stick my blindfold off now. That was the deal. Let me see what I did over here. That's that's actually directly in the center. That's That's pretty good. I will fully admit the attachment points are not that good, really. But considering I was blind, I really want to fix these, but I'm not going to because that would kind of ruin the spirit of, of the competition. Not that it's a competition, I'm just saying. But I can definitely see that I didn't, I didn't smush enough here, so there's a giant gap right here. I want to give everyone who's watched this episode a big thank you for supporting me in this way. It's and I want to give an even bigger thank you for those of you who are deciding to participate and those of you who are going to go down to the links below and donate a little bit of money to the Funday Fund because it really matters and it's most of the reason we're doing this video today. Join us in the next video where I will be glazing these blindfolded. And I'll see you Dirty Potters next week. Thank you for your patronage. I can actively hear the garbage truck coming by at 3 p.m., which is super late, by the way. I know, I sound privileged. But it would be awesome. <laughs> but I waited until the afternoon for them to not come by, because I thought they came by in the morning. So now guess what I gotta do, is I gotta sit here just...
Each other in yourself.